in your in your um, in your research, why is it during that period of relationship, no Indians who came from from um, India, none of them were equipped with the ability to write, to read, to record. They, there were a few who were literate in Indian languages. Um, and there are two memoirs of indenture. Both of them were written by men. Uh, one came out of Suriname, one out of Fiji. Uh, but there are no memoirs by women, certainly. Um, there's a text that came out, a very exciting text that came out of Guyana, written by an indentured man on Plantation Golden Fleece in 1916, called Bahar. It's a pamphlet in Hindi of uh, Pagwa songs, but it also contains some autobiographical detail. Details about his life as an indentured laborer on a plantation, the routines of the plantation, the figure of the overseer. Uh, but there is very limited uh, material in the voice of uh, the indentured themselves. Um, the other question I have is that is the problem, of course, in my family. And that is um, the Indians that came over, the recorders who recorded their names. Did you find, like in my case, my name is Bahari, but the first recording was Barry. The second recording was Perry. The third recording was, I can't remember. And my father did a deep poem, and he said, OK, my name is Henry Barry. Okay. Yeah. Because there, there were too many um, confusing aspects, also known as, also known as. That there, were, there were three also known as. I mean, there were many mistranslitterations. Yeah. My great great grandmother was her name was recorded on her immigration passes, Shiojari. But in Guyana she was called Sujaria, and I went to the village that she listed on her pass in, in Bihar, and I found a family that claimed her and me, and they said, you know, that wouldn't have been the name. It wouldn't have been Sujaria. It wouldn't have been Shiojari. It would have been Shiojaro, follower of the god Shiva. Thank you very much. This is Liability for also comment on it. And it has to do with the, the, the term that you use, um, Indian fatalism, you make reference to a particular incident. You said, this is Indian fatalism. It, it strikes me somewhat optimistic in this day and age to speak of Indian fatalism. Um, it has a kind of broad orientalistic sweep, but that's sort of sorry. It's a kind of orientalism right. of the sort that Edward Said speaks about. Right. And, um, Wondering if one should not investigate and interrogate that concept a little bit more rather than just apparently throwing it somewhat casually. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, thank you for your comment. I've taken your view on this, but I don't know what the question is. The question is, but should, should one investigate it, interrogate it rather than apply it somewhat loosely? And this is what I'm saying. Um, I think if, if it was the narrator was a scholar, maybe yes, but the narrator being who he is, is entitled to have loose opinions on these matters. Um, in the reconstruction of uh, the Indian indentiture account, it has a defining factor, and um, I, I can understand that. But if you were, if you as the author were to deconstruct the name of the book, Kodi Woman, what would be the defining factor in your deconstruction? It would be metaphorical rather than political. Uh, Zora Neale Hurston, in her novel Their Eyes Were Watching God, has one of her characters say that black women are the mules of the world, and, but she doesn't use the expression black women, she uses the, her character uses the N word. And to me, that, that really captures the same sense of burden that I was trying to evoke metaphorically with the title Kuli Woman. A kuli, kuli comes from the Tamil word meaning wages or high, hire, and it was initially applied to uh, laborers at the docks. The Portuguese gave the name to laborers at the docks. And um, you know, in the subcontinent today, it's the term uh, used for people who carry bags at the railway. So it has this sense of, of burden, right, of, of of, of uh, carrying the burdens of history. That is, that is the way that I mean it. Um, 
indentured women had enormous burdens to bear. Um, they were expected to preserve culture, to represent the honor of their culture. Um, they were expected to meet the needs of Indian men and British men on the plantations. So that gesture is, is it's a rhetorical one, but it's also quite simply historically accurate. Uh, Kuli was the term that the British used to describe indentured laborers, and my book is about indenture and about an indentured woman. Uh, so.